work day. Monday. Thank you. Well, we slept in our beds on last night. As we tossed and turned. Yes, yes, yes. Father, as the sun rose this morning. Lord, help. To shine through our windows. As our eyes opened and our feet hit the floor. One more opportunity, Lord, to lift you up in worship and in praise. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For the mercies that you bestowed upon us. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the grace that we did not deserve. But you loved us just that much. Just that much. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask that you would step forward. <laughs> that there would be more of you and less of me. That you would guide my stammering tongue. That you would bring back to my remembrance all those things that I forgot. And Lord, I'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the worship, all the honor. Yes. It's in your darling son Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Yeah. The grass withers and flower faded away. But the word of God shall stand forever. Right. Yep. Hello, somebody. Hello. Let's go to the word of God found in the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians, chapter number 1. 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter one. We'll begin at verse eighteen through twenty-two. Will you allow me to read that? down to twenty-four? I like the conclusion of that chapter. Okay. Say, so, but as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. Yes. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but yes. in him was yea. All right. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. To the glory of God by us. Yes. Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us, he is God. That's right. Yes. Who has also sealed us and sealed. given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul mm. that yes. to yes. spare you I came not as yet unto Corinth. Mm -hmm. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, okay, so. but are helpers of your joy. Yes. Yes. For by faith ye stand. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. So. You may be seated. Thank you, Deacon Swain. I want to talk this morning on this subject. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, neighbor. the promise, promise, the plan, the plan. and the power. Amen. Amen. Preach it now. Three points I want to make and I'm going to take my seat. The promise settles our heart. Yes. The plan strategizes our steps. Wow. And the power secures our victory. Now, preach it. Amen. 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 See, the gracious meaning of our relationship with Christ is not a matter of yes and no, but God's gracious presence 
is always around us. Whether it, it's in politics, business, or ministry, right here. there have always been crooked people. Oh, yeah. Hello, somebody. Oh, man, you own it now. <laughs> but today, it seems like everywhere we look, trust is not merely being violated, it's being shattered. Sure, the big ones like Exxon Mobil and Shell and the Wall Street Journal gets our attention, but perhaps even more corrosive to our willingness to trust are the hundreds of titles or little promises that we make here each day, which almost by a knee-jerk reaction we refuse to believe. The promise. Promises like, I'm not trying to sell you anything. <laughs> or, or, or lose 20 pounds in 20 days. <laughs> How many of us fall for that? <laughs> or this one, this will only take a minute of your time. <laughs> or, or the one I like, this won't hurt. Just hold on a second. This won't hurt. It's too bad. But he, there's no risk or obligation. Or you can't miss it. Promises like, if, I, if I'm elected, I will be, I will do, I will give. Make the world better. You will have. <laughs> oh, look at this one. Read my lips. No new taxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. We've been conditioned to disbelieve and with good reason. We've been jaded and we're skeptical. But the word promise has been thrown around so lightly that there's even a brand of margarine called promise. I promise it's light enough that you won't gain any weight. It's very light in calories. Too many promises have been broken. Is anyone trustworthy today? Is there anyone who will keep his or her word? They leave us little wiser and a little less trusted. They may even break us inside. But promises that are kept gives us life and hope. All right. <laughs> they are the catalyst for realizing our most joyful and even wildest dreams. Promises. So ask yourself, can we get beyond the skepticism of our day? Or can we step out on faith Holding on to a promise. As soon as we ask that question, we realize that our faith is only as good as it objects. Watch it, watch it. Once upon a time, a handshake was a promise. It used to mean yeah. something. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. It was better than a signed contract in the 21st century. But people, in spite of their best intentions, will fail us. But God never will. Hello, somebody. In our scripture lesson today, Paul is addressing a broken promise. He had intended to visit the Christians at Corinth, but Situations had become so bitter that he postponed his visit. Uh -huh. Why, Pastor? In order to spare the pain of his apostolic rebuke. Watch it now. Simply meaning to show that possessive cause, the promise, 
God promised that he would not leave us. Come on now. No, God promised that he would never, never. leave us or forsake us. Amen. And he's still with us today, Sister Jackson. Oh, yeah. He holds that yeah. promise. Yeah. He keeps his promise. The Bible said he is not a man, Deacon Williams, that he should not. The promise, the promise, we, we stand on that promise. Yes, sir. Yes. See, I've never made a promise because I can make you a promise, Reverend Alvarado, and I can turn my back and I'll never see you. I'll duck and dodge you every time you come my way. Mm, tell me about it. No. I'm not going to keep that promise. Yeah. I just told him something. <laughs> When you promise somebody something, you say, I'm committed to doing what I say I'm doing. I promise you that. God promised that bad times won't last forever. All right. <laughs> God promises that if we just hold on to his unchanging hand, this too shall pass. We might be fearful right now with the pandemic, with this uh, coronavirus, but God promised that he would bring us through. Yes. Hello, somebody. Right. <laughs> they might have quiet this morning, Rev. Right. Preach it anyway. Let me see. Let me see. Right. I'm going to preach it anyway. Now, let's go to the plan. Right. The plan, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Yes. says, for I know, reading from the NIV, the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Right. I like that one. The plan. Paul opponents use his change in plans to accuse him of deceitfulness. Things don't change much. All of us have made adjustments or judgments from time to time without the benefit of all the information. Uh -huh. Hello, somebody. It's human nature to paint the picture with too broad a stroke or to succumb to the temptation to think the worst of others yeah. and to jump up to the worst of all possibilities or conclusions yeah. before you even know the facts. Right. Hello, somebody. Right. Before you know the truth yeah. or the facts about it, Paul didn't spend too much time defending himself before he points us toward the real issue. Right. Mm. He points us back to the promise and the plan. Mm -hmm. What you talking about, Pastor? The ones that makes a difference in our lives. Yeah. The only truth that matters. The ones that gives us life. The ones that take our life from us. Uh -huh. So God can speak and he can take your life. Yeah. God can speak and he can heal your body. Yeah. God can speak and he can make a dead man here. Yeah. You're on it. Hmm. Yeah. Jesus is described in scripture as the promised one. Yes. Jesus Christ is God great yes to the world. All right. Though our experience with people may cause us to be leery sometimes, on, our experience with Jesus and the Holy Spirit strengthens us with people that people may cause us uh, to, to think sometimes that uh, uh, you can't depend on them. Mm -hmm. Tell us but our experience Tell us with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit strengthens us. It strengthens our heart, uh -huh. giving us hope that we can trust God fully without any reservations. Right. Hello, somebody. Right. See, a pastor, a visit old man was confined to his wheelchair because of rheumatism. Watch it now. But he had his Bible open in front of him. The minister noticed that the word proved was written continually in the margins. This man had taken God's word and written his own experience in the margin. Beside each promise, 
Here's what he said. As he found it to come true in his own life, he had written the word proved. It says God keeps all his promises. And he has fulfilled every one of them in Jesus Christ. The pages of the Old Testament are stuck with promises and plans from God. As the night sky is with stars. Some are prophetic visions of what God had in store for his people when the time was right. Some are direct and simple promises, God's forgiving mercy and deliverance. All of God's promises correspond to human need in all its aspects. Look at where you are today. If it had not been the Lord on your side, where would you be? Who could save an old wretch like me that was undone? An old sinner, an old drug addict, an old alcoholic like me. If it had been for the Lord, how could I be in this pulpit? It wasn't nobody but the Lord. You wouldn't hear anything that I had to say if you saw me 21 years ago. Walking around with a 40 ounce in my hand. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Saying you got some change, man? What about it? <laughs> Can I get one for $8? Uh, <laughs> Let me have one on credit, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd have seen me 21 years ago, huh, you wouldn't be laughing right now if I was in this pulpit. You'd be saying, what the heck? Who let him in a pulpit? But if it had not been for the Lord, hello somebody, that was on my side, I'm talking about the promise that I am somebody. I'm talking about the plan he had for me standing here today. If it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, y'all wouldn't be calling me Pastor LaVerne. If it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, you wouldn't be calling me the Pastor of Old Bethlehem. If it had not been for the Lord that is on my side, you wouldn't be listening at my dreams and my visions. If it had not been for the Lord, I couldn't lay hands on you and you felt faith that you would be here. Oh, the promise and the plan. Oh, God keeps all his promise. And he has fulfilled every one of them through his son, Jesus Christ. But I was the chief of them among God's promises in the promise of a forgiveness that would restore humankind to fellowship with God. He knew what it took to bring me back into the church. I had to get down in my lowest depths. I had to almost be flat on my back. Almost saw death just surrounding me. I was almost ready for the grave. But if it had not been for the Lord, yes. his plan, yes. his promises, yes. then I wouldn't be here yes. right now. 